So just remember, we're professionals. We have years of experience behind all this. So don't try any of this at home. Who are the Mythbusters? Ooh. Mason Cook. Always wear protection. Mythbusters. In the face. <laughs> Mythbusters. Paul Shepard. Science. <laughs> Enjoying it, man. Oh, this is gonna suck so bad. Mm -hmm. Trained professional. Don't try this at home. It's a shame. <gasps> and Shuri. No, this is power. Go! Faster! Come on, Shuri! Come on! Between them, more than 75 years in the special effects and biochem industries. They don't just tell the truth, they put them to the test. Today we're doing another fan special. We've got another email from Luke. Another biochem myth? Yep, and this time involves the enzyme methionine synthase reductase. So, what's the myth? Well, Luke has heard that people with methionine synthase reductase deficiency have completely normally functioning folate and methionine cycles, and thus no clinical symptoms. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what's the myth? <laughs> well, let's take a look at what he said. <laughs> let's take a look at this myth. Let's take a look at this myth. In the methionine cycle, methionine is converted to S-adenosylmethionine, which is then, using various methyl transferases, converted to S-adenosyl homocysteine, which can then be converted to homocysteine. Methionine synthase acts to convert homocysteine to methionine using a methyl group from the folate cycle. The folate cycle takes tetrahydrofolate to 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate and then to 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate which donates the methyl group in the methionine synthase reaction. Methionine synthase reductase acts to keep the cobalamin cofactor of methionine synthase in its reduced form. Every 200 to 2000 turnovers, the cobalamin cofactor becomes oxidized to cobalamin 2. Typically in methionine synthesis, cobalamin-3 is converted to cobalamin-1 in the same reaction that takes homocysteine to methionine and is remethylated by methyl tetrahydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. Methionine synthase reductase takes oxidized cobalamin-2 back to cobalamin-3 through an electron transfer. The electron is first donated by NADPH being converted to NAD+ which transfers the electron to FAD and then onto FMN, and then back to the cobalamin group, along with a methyl transfer from SAM to SA. But don't take my word for it. Watch some experts act out the whole process. Say this baseball is our electron. Thank you, good sir. That's some good methyl. So, methionine synthase reductase is a 78 kilodalton oxyreductase flavoprotein that's located in the cytoplasm of mammalian cells. Yeah, that's right, and it keeps methionine synthase in its active form. 
How? By keeping methionine synthases cobalamin and cofactor in the reduced state? Exactly. You see, about every 200 to 1,000 catalytic cycles, the methionine synthase cobalamin cofactor gets oxidized. And when it's oxidized, methionine synthase can't methylate homocysteine anymore. Okay, so if homocysteine isn't converted to methionine, then methionine synthase would build up. Wouldn't you think that other compounds would build up in the methionine and folate cycles, causing certain disease states? Well, that's what we're here to find out. We're going to test these conditions in an individual who, who apparently has methionine synthase reductase deficiency. If Luke's right, then this person will have a clean bill of health. If not, I guess we'll have to send them to the doctor. All right. Yeah. If methionine synthase can't convert homocysteine to methionine, homocysteine is bound to build up. So first we need a model of methionine synthase reductase deficiency. Let's see. No. 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 Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so we're here with our patient, Matt, who definitely has untreated methionine synthase reductase deficiency, right? Absolutely. Correct. That's, that's correct. <laughs> Excellent. So our doctor here, Dr. Sloan, is going to test for homocysteinuria. Homocysteinuria is a buildup of homocysteine in the system. So, Doc, how are we going to test it? Well, homocysteine builds up in large quantities in the urine and serum of patients. So, we could do a blood test, but it's much easier just to do a urine test. There you go. Get to it. Thanks. So Luke Smith is already busted then. Yeah, but there seems to be lots of other conditions that can result from MSR deficiency. Well, what should we look at next? I think we should look at the other side of the <coughs> methionine synthase re reaction and see what happens to methionine when MSR is deficient. Absolutely, let's do it, man. <laughs> when methionine synthase is no longer functioning, homocysteine cannot be methylated into methionine, and thus methionine levels will go down. So we're here with our good friend, Dr. Sloan, who's a very advanced doctor, you could even say a specialist. Um, so Doc, what's the uh, test for hypomethionemia? Well, since hypomethionemia is a low blood level of methionine, we'll do a blood test. Excellent. Let's hope our patient is alright with getting blood taken. Oh my god, guys, I hate getting my <laughs> blood taken. Okay, here we go. Let's get to it. Uh. Okay, that should be good. All right. Well, we've got the results from the blood test. And? Low levels of methionine in the blood. Hypomethionemia. So, myth busted? Busted. 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 So, what other conditions do you think we should test? Why don't we look at megaloblastic anemia? What's that? Well, it's a condition caused when there's inhibition of DNA synthesis in red blood cells. Oh, okay. So how does that come about from MSR deficiency? I knew you'd ask that. Why don't we go look at the blueprint? An intermediate of the folate cycle, 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate, is needed to methylate DUMP into DTMP, which is subsequently used in DNA synthesis and repair. When methionine synthase is no longer functioning, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate builds up and is trapped thus impairing DNA synthesis, which leads to megaloblastic anemia. Alright Doc, we're back, and we're looking at uh, megaloblastic anemia this time. How are we going to test it? Well, you know, large red blood cells are an essential sign of the condition. So, I guess it's another blood test. Is that another blood test? That's right. 
Take a look at these samples. Absolutely. All right. So we have uh, an original blood sample here that's absolutely fine, as you can tell. If you just hold it up to the light there, that's perfectly fine. But we can also take. Looks it over like some pretty good blood. We can also have a look in our microscope here. Right. Yeah, that's definitely good that blood. Mom. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. There you go. Mythbusters 101 right yeah. there. All right. So we have a look at that, and yep, as you can tell, if you want to take a look in there, we have normal red blood cells. Definitely. So we'll take that one out. And then we'll have a look at this one. This is our patient's sample here. I mean, if we have a look at it just like that right there, you can tell right away, I mean, Mythbusters 101, that that is megablastic anemia. But for all the folks at home, we'll put it in the microscope. And there you go, megablastic anemia. Yep, there's definitely mega megaloblasts there. So our patient definitely has megablastic anemia. So I would say. Mythbusters. Mythbusted. But, hey, could we have just taken use the original blood sample? Absolutely not. It has to be properly stored. Yeah, and that would have been way too easy. It's much more fun to torture people. Yeah. Busted. 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 What about homocystinuria? That's busted. What about hypomethionemia? Busted. What about megaloblastic anemia? Also busted. So the myth that says that there's no clinical symptoms related to MSI deficiency is completely busted? Not quite. You see, methionine synthase reductase deficiency shows the same symptoms as methionine synthase deficiency. After all, methionine synthase reductase is responsible for keeping methionine synthase active. So I think we should look at the genetics. That's a good idea. All right. So we have one more test to run, Doc. Sure. What are we looking at now? To 100% bust the, this myth, we need to know that our lovely patient is methionine synthase reductase deficient and not just methionine oh. synthase deficient. We need to check for the genetic cause of methionine synthase reductase deficiency. All right, that shouldn't be too difficult. Let's swab the deck. Yeah, yeah. let's do this. Open wide. <laughs> Should be good. We'll bring this back for further testing, but you know how it goes. Thanks, Dr. Sloan. Dr. Sloan's uh, results here for the genetics test. And what do they say? It's definitely MSR deficient. So the gene is mutated. Yep. Busted. 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 So Luke's myth is totally busted. Yeah, definitely busted. And our patient is really sick. Well, the doctor has been able to prescribe him with some folate supplements, some cabalamin supplements, and other B vitamins to sort of fix up the balance. Awesome. Yeah. There's just one more thing. No episode of Mythbusters would be complete without an explosion. Exactly. Keep going. Well, we have half a word. Oh, size. <laughs> 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 
I redo. How are we gonna test it? That's why we got the spill kit. Yep, this time involving the enzyme. <laughs> <laughs> enzyme methionine synthase reduction. The aluminum pole factor of methionine synthase gets oxidized. What? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> oh no, I didn't know why you said laughing. It's just like mumbo jumbo. Flesh <laughs> I'm recording now. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Prepare! Alright. Is it rolling? Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that tasted less good than last time. It tasted <laughs> plastic. <laughs> it tasted like plastic. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs>